Okay, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is the special city council meeting for Monday, May 18th. And maybe we have the roll call, please. Mayor Kusumoto? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Murphy? Here. Council Member Turco? Here. Council Member Gross? Here. Council Member Hasselbrink? Here. Great, thank you. So, uh, special orders of the day we have item 3A, it's the preliminary uh, general fund budget for fiscal 2019 to 20, and it's a report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Um, this is the first budget meeting in our process for fiscal year 2019-2020. And um, we have reviewed the preliminary general fund budget, both on the revenue side and expenditure side with the budget standing committee and with staff. And we are here to give the full council an update tonight. Um, this is, as I said, the first step in the process there is an initial budget gap of uh, just over 480,000, which Maria Luisa will highlight for you. We will be discussing budget cap, gap closure options with the budget standing committee throughout the process and be bringing those back to the city council. So wanted to kick that part of it off with you and then hand it over to our <coughs> finance director, Maria Luisa Valdez. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. So um, tonight we will review the preliminary budget for fiscal year 2019-20, the next fiscal year. And our focus will be on general funds revenues and expenditures and the variances, and we're going to compare them in comparison to the fiscal year 2018-19 adopted budget, which was adopted last June. This is the big overview of the picture, big picture overview of the city's projected budget. The city is projecting 14.3 million in revenues and 14, about 14.8 in general fund expenditures. So as in bold, the change in fund balance, which is the budget gap deficit that we're facing for the next fiscal year, <coughs> is 482,510. And as we'll see in the next couple slides, it's mostly due to salary and benefit expenditure increases. Okay, so the revenue forecast here for the next fiscal year is 688,000 more than the budget for, the fiscal, for this fiscal year in comparison to last fiscal year. This is primarily due to um, higher licenses and permits of 323,000. That's due to higher permit revenue of 280,000. And then there's also remaining factors of um, an increase in business licenses. <coughs> then there's also an increase in property taxes of 193,000. That's due to um, our HDL, our consultants, providing with a 3% increase in comparison to this year's property taxes, so higher assessed values, valuations. And then there's charges for services that has an increase of 129,000, and that's due to recreation services. Um, there's just higher program activities for that as well. That's detailed out in the report. Are there any questions with any of the revenue increases or? <coughs> Decreases? I see nods now. No questions? Proceed. Before we go on to expenditures? Okay. So there's overall one, over a one million increase in expenditures, and that's primarily due to salaries and benefits, as I mentioned, 741,000, which is about roughly about 68 to 70% of the increase, for, and that's due to salaries and benefits. The rest is due to contractual services. So we'll go to each one. Um, the big picture is that 741,000 in salaries and benefits, but there's 295,000 in increase for pension costs alone. <coughs> and they're embedded and, and really, you know, embedded or, you know, uh, what, can, what can I say, like spread out between the different departments. And that really is what drives most of the increases in the different departments. As you can see, well, we'll start with like city manager and finance mostly driven of an increase due to pension costs. Then we go to police, which is the highest one there, 368,000. 176,000 of that increase is due to pension costs. The rest of that is due to salaries and benefits, <coughs> and that's due to the new MOU. It's attributed to the new MOU, but there's also some step increases in there as well that really drives that increase for police department. Development services, there's pension costs of about 38,000, but most of that increase, and in contrast to the other departments, it's due to contractual services. So as I mentioned, um, licenses and permits went up, 
and 280,000 of that was due to permit activity. Now, in the expenditures, you see an increase of 148,000 in that department in development services, and that's just directly attributable to the higher permit revenue. Then there's also increases for other contractual services like maintenance contracts and, and NPDS that has an increase. And then the rest, as I mentioned, 38,000 for pension costs. There's also recreation and community services of an increase there of 155. There's also pension costs in there, but there's also increases due to part-time, um, you know, minimum wage, and there's more FTE and M&O maintenance and operations. But that's in contrast that also, you know, there's higher increase in the revenues. As I mentioned in the last slide, there's an increase of 125,000, uh, 129,000 actually, and. Um, you know, just to drive the different activities that there are there. And then, um, and then lastly, just non-departmental, there's increases there for salaries and um, that's due to the new part-time fiscal sustainability manager. And then there's also different contractual services that are coming forward, like a community outreach program that would help us um, attain fiscal sustainability in the long term, and then also a waste franchise agreement consultant that would help us with the procurement process and um, what is the, the public-private partnership consultant to assist in determining if a public and private partnership can be developed to finance improvement improvements or new civic center facilities and that's what drives most of the increase in the expenditures but I'd be happy to go over any of the other ones if you'd like to go in depth. I have a, I have a question on the development services increase you said most of that is uh, licensing and development process. Isn't that offset? Correct. So there's an increase in development services of 244. 148,000 of that is due just to permit activity for a third party consultant. But um, if we go to the previous licenses and permits, which is actually the biggest increase for revenues. It's an increase of 323, and most of that, 280,000 of that, is due to the higher permit um, activity. So 280 less the 148. So really, we still profit, or you know, have a you know, we realize um, an increase in our services. So yeah, there's a higher. So you're correct. All right. Thank you. There's one decrease in there, and that's just. City Council, that's due to uh, some of the dues that were eliminated in the in this fiscal year. But unless there's anything else, then I'll just summarize it. So here is just, you know, what drives the, the budget gap. And there's a 1.1 million increase in expenditures, and that's primarily due to salaries and benefits, 741,000 of that. And then the rest is really contractual services. Of that 741,000, 295,000 is an increase in pension costs, <clears throat> which includes the unfunded accrued liability and the normal rate increase that we have, which we've, it's increased slightly for, for each employee. Um, 220,000 of that increase, of the 295, is due to the unfunded accrued liability payment that we're obliged to have every year. So next year, we're also expected an increase there for for fiscal year 2021, but we won't get those figures until August of this year. Um, in there, in the expenditures, we're, I'm also assuming full staffing for fiscal year 2019-20. And everything is status quo as far as the employees, but we are adding a few, and that includes <coughs> a part-time fiscal sustainability manager and uh, the new, a new full-time neighborhood preservation officer. I shouldn't actually say new, it's, we're just converting this position from a part-time to full-time. We currently have a part-time employee in the development services department, but we're recommending that this employee, this position be converted to full-time to also assist, well, 30, year, 30 years, 30 hours be dedicated to quote compliance matters, but the remaining 10 years to make them to full-time would assist the police department in red light camera enforcement. Um, and also another thing that drives this increase in expenditures is an increase in the MOU, um, those MOU increases that are included in the expenditures. 
We'll have a budget workshop on both April 8th that will discuss the police and the admin budgets and then also on April 15th to discuss recreation and development services and we'll go into detail of their budgets and see how their dollars better serve the community. So it may be appropriate for the next meeting on police but using the uh, neighborhood preservation officer on red light cameras um, is the neighborhood preservation officer a sworn position this position we are not recommending we're not having that as part of the um, description the okay and so the, the two reserves that we have that have been doing the red lights are they leaving uh, councilman gross um, the two are probably set to leave at any time and they haven't announced any kind of re resignation or any date but uh, they both said that they're at the end of their uh, their tour duty at this point and they will stick around until you know uh, till we can get a replacement for them which we are currently working on it, with regard to this position um, the uh, neighborhood preservation officer um, that officer is that um, that code enforcement officer is actually a level uh, three reserve officer so he can operate in a sworn position and would be able to appear in court for us and uh, and follow up on those citations <coughs> okay because I know the two reserves we've got have been there for a long 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 time and have basically done a good job um, I notice that one of your plans is to enhance or try and recruit for reserves will that help backfill that then if we're taking two people out and only a limited 10 hours a week toward this guy yeah the, the for us that 10 hours a week is is critical because what we're looking to you utilize them in in that position would be on the uh, the days that they're in that day Friday that they're in court <coughs> And that would be um, for us optimal because uh, we're going to need somebody to actually appear in court to help uh, argue those cases that are before uh, the traffic commissioner or judge. Um, the reserve program would help us as well, and uh, we are looking at increasing our reserve numbers uh, for a number of reasons, not just for red light camera, but for helping us supplement uh, patrol. And uh, yeah, they would. Uh, they would also. We'd also be looking specifically in our reserve recruitment somebody that had worked traffic at another agency, something like maybe uh, a different department with a different retirement system. They could come over as a reserve and would be interested in in dealing with our uh, red light camera enforcement program. How many? How many reserves? I know that was originally eight people. Yes, sir. Going way back. Uh, we've never really pushed I don't think to build that up beyond the two that we've got are you looking at going toward a target of eight or just replacing those two for right now I think ultimately we're looking at a target of four and one of the reasons why is because of our SRO program we're also looking to utilize uh, one of them in the SRO program uh, one of them um, or two of them for the Red flex, uh, red light camera enforcement, and then uh, and then also our patrol, which would be probably somewhere minimally. I'd like to get at least four more reserves on, and I'm also looking at the funding source because, in looking at um, <coughs> reducing some of the overtime that we currently pay, so I, I couldn't really beef up that program until I got. Um, uh, I would have to use the funding source would be coming from offset of the uh, of the uh, overtime that we currently expand okay and I guess I have a question on the um, the full-time neighborhood uh, preservation officer as well as the sustainability manager so if you were to dollarize that um, what would that be ballparked so for the part-time fiscal sustainability manager it's approximately 30,000 and for the well the conversion of the part-time to full-time it's about forty-seven thousand. That's a, just an upper, right? A forty-seven upper, plus plus forty-seven, or total, a total, 
Forty no forty seven thousand to convert like convert yeah so yeah. so the difference yeah okay. yeah so an upper right okay a, a difference right the change De yeah mm -hmm. delta plus delta okay. okay any other questions yeah, a couple of please mayor pro tem have the <coughs> neighborhood preservation is that built now yes it is we have a part time Javier Marcus okay. he's in the development well, he will be hired tomorrow, and um, that is Mr. David Kane. Okay. That's what we took care of last month. Yeah, last month um, you approved the <coughs> the contract. Though. Okay. Okay. Um, so, looking at, at the big picture, we have like a five percent increase in income. We have an eight point two percent increase in costs. We have an eleven point six percent increase in personnel costs. Um, it's not a good trend, first of all, but the of the of the eight point two percent increase, if we take out the PERS, they balance out. So the two twenty is is what's killing us in the for this year so far. Um, yeah. That's just Sacramento dictating, correct? Mm -hmm. With the PERS um Reform, yes, we had a closed amortization period, and that forces us to have higher, you know, um, unfunded accrued liability payments over this course, and so it could change just based on the discount rate. Yeah, that's something we definitely discuss in the Budget Standing Committee, that that is the driving force. Okay, thank you. No other questions? So with that, um, you know, staff has developed a 10-year forecast here, and um, we're working with the Budget Standing Committee in order to tackle and do a long-term fiscal sustainability and to um, really get something, or what am I trying to say, to come up with solutions to eliminate the long-term general fund structural deficit. As you can see here, and I've explained before, we would deplete through our fund balance by fiscal year 24-25. And that remains because our expenditures keep on increasing over our revenues. As far as our pensions, as, as you just mentioned, you know, we were paying about a million dollars and then, you know, before 2015. And then come to current year, in fiscal year 2019-20, we're paying $2 million. That's what we're budgeting for now, $2 million. Then fast forward five years into fiscal year 24-25, we're over $3 million. So over the next five years, we're going to have to, you know, somehow fit into our budget over a million dollars over the next five years. So approximately 250, 300,000 a year of an increase as we continue to move forward through pension costs. And that's very much a reality. It could increase though, based on the discount rate. And we'll continue to stay tuned. You know, we'll find out every August for the next fiscal year. <coughs> So at this time, we would ask council um, to direct staff regarding potential gap closures. We are discussing with the budget standing committee and we have three lists that we're discussing and we'll continue to go through the in April during our budget workshops and also in May and June. Thank you. So back to us. Um, any uh, comments from the budget standing committee? <clears throat> I think one, one of the things that we did <clears throat> a little bit differently this year, and we, we took out that, that surplus to kind of give the true um, budget gap, because originally when the reports were presented to us, it was 262,000. Well, it's really not. It's really 489,000, knowing that we have that 220,000 as a budget gap you know, mechanism, but we really wanted to lay out what the full the full gap was and and we've done that i mean you've done that before in the past this one we just wanted to highlight to show what we're really up against as opposed to right i mean and with an answer we want to show the raw data and then together develop the answers and the goal of course would be to to mm -hmm. balance it without using that fund that we set aside last year um with the uh, with staff's help and recommendations on budget uh, closure measures Yeah, I, I just like to commend the budget standing committee. The uh, job gets tougher every year, and um, this year is the most daunting starting point so far. I remember the last couple of years I was there, the gap was quarter million to two hundred thousand dollars, and now it's almost double that. So we appreciate your efforts. 
we know the worst part of being on the budget standing committee is having to listen to the same same presentation <laughs> a week later after they uh, after they ask for your input. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I'll wreck in a second uh, what Richard says. Thank you to the Budget Standing Committee and to staff to bring this to us. But I um, guess as far as um, recommendations for gap closure, um, I'm not sure you're going to get anything out of this particular session. Will it be future? Yeah. We <laughs> I, what we anticipate has been said by the Budget Standing Committee and, and uh, the Mayor Pro Tem. We, um, we will look at all the options, discuss sure. it with the Standing Committee, and continue to bring it back to Council to close that gap. It is getting more and more difficult to close that gap to balance it for the fiscal year. I, I feel confident that we will get there for this year again. Um, next year is going to be even tougher because that pension liability and that annual cost continues to ramp up. But we will get through this fiscal year, work with the standing committee not only on this one year, but the 10 year fiscal sustainability plan, um, continue to discuss short term and long term options and prepare for upcoming community meetings in July. Well, there's nothing else. I guess we just, uh, what, it's really receiving file, basically, at this, this point? Mm -hmm. Yes. I well, yes. ask one other quick question. This is something that, that really is kind of handed down to us, um, and I'm still not 100% clear on the oversight for proofs. Um, apparently, there isn't really any. And are we staff-wise looking at doing anything legislative-wise that can help address that? In other words, have we laid out a plan to hit our senator, hit our assemblyman? Um, I don't know that it's going to do anything from the federal standpoint. But on what's going on and the ramifications of what's going to happen and we intend to hold them responsible uh, as we're moving down. I mean, we're fighting it here as I'm sure the other cities are doing the, the same, but our fight is only uh, one aspect of the war. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the best thing we can do is continue to communicate with our local legislative representatives. We had previously, I had had several conversations, I think Council Member Hasselbrink as well, and we have together with um, previous Senator Wynn, and the political fight there to get something done legislatively to help us out, help all the cities out is, is a difficult one. It's, it's more about how the actuarial rate and assumed rate of return changes and so we're hoping and they're going down to seven percent we're hoping that's not going to go lower if that goes lower that has even more of an impact on the ramp up the thing that i've talked before and, and council member hasselbrink with senator Wynn, if there was ability legislative to, to make it easier to increase the amortization period um, what we're dealing with is about a 19 year average and if that was extended out to 10 years more, that would help us on an annual basis and it would spread out that increase over a longer period of time. I think that that might be remote as well, that chance, but we continue to dialogue with our local representatives. I think it's the best route we can go. On the other side of that is the lead. Uh, sitting on a policy committee, I want to know what I can do to kind of push from the lead standpoint the, the same process um they're in the boat with us and and i i'm worried that we're not all connected we're just kind of assuming that they know well then the other side of it you know the pers board has been criticized of being too conservative in terms of the investments that are allowed to be made and have as a policy restricted many of the different types of investments and that has slightly brought that return down and so the other side I mean risk is risk and reward go together so the more you open that up the possibility of increasing the rate of return rises but so does the possibility of, of losses that has been a discussion with the first board on an ongoing basis as well okay and just real quick just to <clears throat> follow up with Brett we've had many um, meetings and conversations with previous Senator Wynn, but also Tom Umberg, um, Tyler Deep, 
on a couple of things. One is the amortization increasing that. The other one is to um, revisit their antiquated investment policies. There's so many rules about things they cannot invest in. Um, and it is obviously a statewide thing. There are some cities that are going to be upside down in two years. Um, so this is not just us. Um, it is state. It is the number one topic at any conference meeting, um, one on one or group that you go to. So everybody is extremely connected. John Morlock is running a huge campaign on this. Um, so everybody is very connected. We're just trying to hit it at all different angles, whether it's increasing the amortization, revisiting the, the investment strategies, um, having the state help us out. Um, there, there's all kinds of different things. So it's very connected. We're just trying to hit all angles. All right. Well, there's nothing else. Uh, we're not going to have closed session. Is that correct? That correct. So there's no closed session. And so we'll just go ahead and adjourn to the uh, regular meeting at okay. 6 o'clock. Being adjourned. Thank you. See you.